Hey guys, so I want to show you how you can bundle your React application with an Express server, even if you're using GraphQL. It works just fine, and that way you only have to be running one server. And now what I'm going to show you with is with the this project and with this server. Um, they're both on my GitHub if you'd like to clone them and follow along. Um, and for both of these, just go to the last branch. So for this one, I'll put a link in the description below too. But these are the two branches I'm going to go off of starting the video. And we're just going to be using Express um, Serve Static Files. So let's get started. So first I have my uh, React application up here. And we are using React Apollo in this. And in React Apollo you specify where your GraphQL server is. And now that we're going to be combining them into one, there'll be one GraphQL server and we're going to be sitting on top of it. So we just do slash GraphQL. So in the index folder. And that's it. That's all we need to do for our server. Or not our server, for our React application. So I'm just going to go ahead and close it and come back over here to the command line because I have this project open and I'm just going to do npm run build because this is a create react application it'll create the static files that we need. So then what I can do, this is my express application. Um, express tells us that we can just do this. So app.use express.static and then specify the folder. So it's important that you do this after where your GraphQL endpoint is and if you have a graph, uh, graphical endpoint as well, here's mine. Make sure you do it under both of those. So I'm going to do mine right here. Um, it's okay to do it before your subscription server if you have one. So we're just going to be using this. This is whatever folder you want to call it. I'm going to call mine public, that's fine. Or we could call it build because that's what this thing is going to be called when it gets output. Whatever you want to call your static files. I'll call mine public because that's kind of the standard. And we actually need to do it again and just do a star here. And the reason for that is this is going to be, this is like a catch all right here. So that way we can handle everything in our client side. Whereas here we want to load the files. And it's important that this star is after this one. Because here we're going to load each route. And if the route doesn't exist, it's then going to be caught by this star. And that's when our index page is going to be run and it can handle everything. So make sure you do it in this order so everything works properly. And if we come over here, cool, our build folder is done. If we clear this, we can do an ls. We can notice we have a build folder. So now if I do an ls on build, I can see I have some index.html. And I can just tree this file. Um, tree is also something, I think I got that off of npm. Just a little package that... Uh, prints out all the subdirectories. So we can see all the subdirectories here. And you can see static, CSS, JavaScript. This is all what's got. So we need to grab this folder. So I'm going to hop on over here. This is my server folder. I just switched tabs. I'm going to copy that build folder into this one. So it's up and then it's called build. And then I'm going to rename it public. So now if I do ls, I see the public, and just to show you guys, we can tree public, it's the same, you got the same files. So now if I do npm start here, we can see our application boot up. So cool, no errors, and if I come over here, I can go to localhost 3000 slash login, and looks like something didn't work unexpected token. This this happened to me before. If this happens to you, it's because your browser is caching things and messing stuff up. So you can just copy this URL and open it up in an incognito browser. And you can paste it in and you can see it does work. The reason for this is I basically have done a lot of React development on this and this route it's just like caching some data. Maybe if I went over here and deleted some, maybe it's a cookie, maybe it's cache storage, something that's getting cached and messing it up. If I got rid of that, maybe it would work, uh, but it does work if you go to 
this. And it, you might not even get that error that I got, but if you do, that's how you get it. You can just go to this. And after a while, that'll go away. And you'll notice if I push login, it'll actually go to GraphQL and it'll say, hey, that was an invalid login. So it's actually connecting to GraphQL. So, and we're at 3000, right? That's what our server is running at here. And so you saw me just do npm start. Now we have GraphQL and React serving from the same server. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to put this code up on GitHub. And I'm going to also good to note, you can see this is what keeps track of how many changes it's been made. I need to make sure to update my git ignore. I'm just going to do that over there. But we can now say build. Well, actually public because public is getting created. So we don't want all the build files to show on GitHub. They're unnecessary. Um, but yeah, so all right. Well, actually, I guess since we're now, since we're showing a static, you know what, I'll keep it. I'm going to keep the public folders. That way you guys could download this project and just use it right away if you wanted to. So it will have the login stuff. So cool. Also good to note, if you make changes in your front end, you're going to have to rebuild the project if you want to see it here. What, how kind of I do it where I split up into, I have like the server and I run that on one por uh, port and the client on another port. I like doing that until you, I would move it over when you go into production if you wanted to combine them. Because you don't even have to combine them for production if you don't want to. But that is it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. Codes on GitHub. Links is in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video.